What's up everyone? Mike here, hanging out on the mushroom farm. Great video for you guys tonight. So I had a subscriber send me an email and just with a quick question, I want to kind of tell you guys what that was and uh, answer that email over the YouTube channel just so everybody can kind of get knowledge from it. And I'll just say this is going to be great for any beginner grower. They're in the first initial like kind of few months of growing and I'll say those first six months as a beginner grower are the hardest, okay? There's an initial learning phase, okay? And that initial learning curve can be kind of extended for some people, that's okay. But they said, Mike, I know you've got like a decade of mushroom farming experience. If you could go back in time and you could tell yourself anything, okay? And especially in those first six months as a beginner grower, what would be like the number one thing you would go back and tell yourself? And I'll, I'll tell you guys, number one, I would subscribe to this channel, okay? So after that though, after number one, after you guys subscribe to the channel, number two, you got this, okay? Seriously, you got this. Do not stop. That's the number one thing after you subscribe to this channel that you gotta tell yourself, okay? Because in the initial phases, there's gonna be so many times you mess up, all right? And you have to remind yourself, anything you've ever done in life, remember, no, not everything. You've probably always sucked at it in the beginning, okay? Everybody sucks at the thing you first try at. But after years and years and years of repetitively doing that task over and over again, you'll refine your processes, your skill will improve, you will eventually become a master of that skill, okay? You will get so good, okay? A lot of people, a lot of people wonder, or worry about competition or something, stuff like that. You know, even you start farming and you're like, hey, I got another mushroom grower. Let me tell you guys something. You can be so good, no one can stop you, okay? That's how good you can be. So in the very beginning, I contaminated stuff over and over that first year. You know, it's not uncommon. A lot of people mess up. But I just kept going, okay? Every time I would get contamination, I would just ask myself, okay, whoa, how did this happen? And I would kind of think about the whole process and just kind of almost work backwards from where the problem occurred and then think about what actually happened, all right? So you have to be observant when you have problems and stuff like that. So in those initial six months, after you subscribe to the channel, you tell yourself you got this, you stay persistent, be observant, okay? Just make sure like you're checking stuff out all the time, especially when you're kind of like learning your growing parameters. For instance, I just built this grow room, all right? I originally grew mushrooms in the St. Louis, Missouri region, okay, kind of like the Midwest. So I did that for about eight years full time in the Midwest, and then I moved out here and I built this farm from scratch. And now, I, now I'm growing out here in the Rocky Mountains at 7,000 foot elevation. Okay, much different. We were at like, I think 383 foot, uh, basically sea level where my last farm was. So the environment is way different than what I had back in St. Louis, you know. And I actually had to modify it and kind of change up what I'm doing in here with like my humidity, humidity, my airflow. I tweaked it just a little bit compared to like how I had my grow room set up in St. Louis. And I've actually got some like viewing windows here. Those of you who know who have like been tuning into the channel for a while, you know how I got the room set up here. But since I got these viewing windows here, I was actually like walking back and forth. These last couple days, okay, now that I got all these mushrooms coming up, I've been walking back and forth. I guarantee you I have checked on these mushrooms at least 100 times each day, okay? <laughs> and I know that sounds excessive, all right? but. If you're trying to get super good at this stuff, okay, that's the kind of stuff you gotta do, man. I mean, that's how like in tune and like married to these things you almost have to be in a way if you wanna be really good at it. So, and you might say, Mike, really? You check on them a hundred times a day? And I have, guys, I really have. These like last two days, I have been checking on them that much. And you don't always have to do that, okay? I'm doing that just because I just built this grow room here. Like it's a brand new grow room. I gotta make sure everything is tuned in right. The environmental conditions are just a little bit different than what I had in Illinois and Missouri, so I gotta make sure it's running right. But what is that beyond just me being like persistent, wanting to check on this like 
100 times a day. Guys, it's my passion for this. It's because I love to do this. And I'll just say there are people, there's a lot of guys that are attracted to this. They'll get on Google and they'll just type in like profitable farming methods or whatever. And mushroom farming is definitely a profitable means of farming. But I'll just say, even though like you're going to make some money at it, you got to have passion to do this stuff. You got to want to love to do it. You're not going to get rich doing this stuff, okay? You'll make a good living. You might, you, and, and you can you can do very well for yourself, okay? But I'll just say, if you're going to get into this and you think everybody that's a mushroom farmer that gets into this just gets rich, that is not the case, okay? It's going to be your passion and your love for this that, you, that makes you want to keep doing it. It's going to be that fulfillment you get when you actually complete this whole task, okay? Like, just, just imagine the fulfillment that I... Now, I love this stuff, okay? So... Just imagine the level of fulfillment I'm gonna have when I go and I sell my first batch of mushrooms to my new customers here. It's gonna be unreal, okay? Like I literally built this whole farm, like I said, from the ground up. So hopefully that helped you, man, the subscriber that sent me that email. I think you're gonna do great, all right? I think you got a good setup already and you're on the right track. And I also hope that helped any other beginners out there that are watching this video. So if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel all right drop this video a like let's take a look at these mushrooms real quick guys before we get out of here let's see what we got look at those like what is that dude that's my uh this is my hericium americanum okay that's my bear's head so you can tell that's a little bit different than the lion's mane okay than the hericium arenaceus but i like those bear's head guys those are actually, those are some of my favorites. And I'll tell you, before we cut this thing off, I want to talk to some people too. If you're just wondering, you're like, hey, Mike, what's the difference between like the lion's mane and the Hericium Americanum? And I'll just say that Hericium Americanum, it doesn't get much love, okay, as far as like from a grower perspective. I've been growing that mushroom probably about five years or so. And I love it, dude. Okay, and I'll tell you what what is its superpower compared to like the lion's mane? There's a couple things you can tell your customers if you're a farmer just to help you try to sell it, okay? Because you gotta be able to sell these mushrooms, all right? The Hericium Americanum, it never gets a bitter, okay? Lion's mane, it can develop a slight bitter sometimes the, the more mature they get. But that Hericium Americanum, you can let them blow up, okay, and get absolutely massive. These things have a few more days left. I will show in a video how massive these things get. You can check out my Instagram. It's down in the description box below. These mushrooms are a little bit darker. They finish off like kind of like an off-white color compared to the lion's mane. But you can see some old photos I have of these Aristic Americanums, and they just get freaking massive, okay? So the volume you get, it's just impressive. So whenever you present like a box to like a customer, whether it's like a chef or someone at a farmer's market, Eight ounces of Hericium Americanum, the bear's head, will look way bigger than eight ounces of the lion's mane mushroom, okay? No one's busting out a scale, all right, and checking the weights. No one cares, guys. And I'll just say, I'll just say, like, when you present that to a customer at a farmer's market, I actually used to always sell by volume, okay? So it, it didn't matter. And even when you give it to a chef, so, so these are dense mushrooms, okay? If you just have a, I'm just saying, if you have a five-pound box, of Hericium Americanum compared to a five pound bo box of Hericium Arenaceus, you're gonna have a bigger five pound box of Hericium Americanum, all right? So just a few things, we'll have more videos talking about the Hericium Americanum compared to the lion's mane, but I love both of these strains, okay? I've had customers purchase uh, several of these, okay? So if, and if you need any of these and you wanna try some of these cultures out, just head over to my website that's down in the description box below and you guys can pick up your liquid cultures there. But I hope you guys all found this video helpful and informative, and if you did, please drop this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, but that's all I got for you on this one, and I will catch you guys on the next one.